for joining us today. In just a moment, we're going to hear a great talk. But first, take a minute and let us know where you're watching from. As you watch today, we want you to know we've been praying for you, and we believe God is going to speak to you through today's teaching. Just a reminder, if you're ever in the Marysville area, we would love you to join us in person for church. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy today's teaching. Thank you for making Rock Creek a part of your spiritual growth. Hey, Rock Creek Church, welcome again. We're so glad you joined us wherever you're watching from. It's been an incredible season through summer, but it's officially fall in Washington State. And so maybe you're watching from your car or up on your cozy couch, uh, or maybe you're in the office, wherever you're at, I'm so glad you joined us as part of your spiritual growth. Hey, if you're on our YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe for all the latest content. If you're on social media, let us know where you're watching from, who's watching with you. Maybe your highlight from summer, what was the best part, maybe the best vacation you took. We'd love to see you uh, interact with us in the comments. Again, as you take notes today, either on our app or you can download the notes directly from our website, uh, we believe that this message today, this conversation we're about to have, is gonna help you be a catalyst uh, to grow in your faith. And so uh, we, we're tackling a brand new collection of talks entitled, Who Told You That? And, and here's the whole premise of this entire uh, series, is that there's a lot of well-meaning Christians, and it might be you today, who's been told a few things. Maybe some things that were well-meaning, maybe some things that you've actually tried to apply to your life, and well, it may not be exactly the way that God wants it to be. And uh, over the last 22 year, two years of pastoring people, I've discovered that some Christians have been told something that's a little bit off. It's a little bit funky. It's a little bit, hey, that's not actually in the Bible. People make a quote or people say a saying and like, oh yeah, that's, no, who told you that? Who told you that? And so as you join us in this September season, uh, we're gonna be tackling some of those things of who told you that about parenting? Who told you that about your relationships? Who told you that about life? Who told you that's how it works in the gospel? And I hope that today as we launch this series, uh, you'll, you'll join us every weekend. You'll join us um, and, and it'll be a part of your spiritual growth. I wanna encourage you to, to show up on a weekend in person um, if you can make it. If you live within our facilities here in Marysville, Here's your personal invitation. We have so many fun things happening in this season, whether it's amazing kids event or today's Jersey weekend, as you can see. I'm in my favorite team, the Lord's team, the mighty, mighty Seahawks. And so representing for them in this season, uh, we're believing Super Bowl is, is on its way in Jesus' name. Um, and so as we tackle today's conversation, really let me just give you the upfront thought. Who told you that there are no second chances. Who told you that there are no second chances? Uh, I have three beautiful kids, been married 17 wonderful years, and over those years my wife has discovered something about me that oftentimes when I'm looking for something I have a hard time finding it. Whether it's my keys, my wallet, uh, the grocery item in the fridge, who moved my fill in the blank, and oftentimes what we've discovered is that I I miss it in plain sight. Have you ever done that? Maybe you can relate. Hey, who moved my keys? I know it was one of the kids. I always blame the kids first. And then, then it goes to the missus. Hey, did you move my keys? And oftentimes this is what happens. Um, they're right there. And I didn't see them. They were in plain sight. They were obvious. The wallet, who moved my wallet? And everyone's like, it's your wallet. That's why it's your wallet. We wouldn't touch your wallet. And although one of my kids might have, there was some cash in it, but, but these days there's no cash. It's all cards. And so I said, I said, who moved my wallet? And sure enough, someone will go, hey, d dad, it's right there on the, on the table. Or my wife will ask me to get something. Hey, can you get the ketchup out of the fridge? Babe, we're all out. I don't see it. I mean, I stand there with the fridge open. I don't see it. You know, one scan, one scan, one scan. No, it's not there. And she literally will walk right over and go, it's, it's right there. It's, it's obviously, it's, it's right there. You don't see it. And, and for some reason, sometimes the most obvious things are the hardest to see. And I think that's a great image for our conversation today because sometimes the most obvious things about our faith, we got a skewed perspective. We don't actually see clearly. And so as we tackle this idea that who told you there are no second chances, on the surface it should be obvious that God's grace 
makes available second chances, but a lot of people, and it might be you today that may be raised in a certain denomination or a certain kind of theological background that, that said, man, grace is grace, but man, don't make it greasy grace. Like, hey, God is long suffering, but he's gonna, you know, he ain't that long suffering. And there's not a lot of second chances when it comes to your theological preferences. And I'm just here to tell you, who told you that? Because as we're gonna see today, in the life of a guy named Jonah, that God is the God of second chances. And we could just, we could take weeks to talk about all the amazing, what I call trophies of God's grace. Whether it's Abraham, Moses, Joshua, I mean, Peter, Mark, I mean, you go through the old and new, there's all types of incredible figures, uh, Rahab. I mean, there's incredible people that God uses in significant ways who what I call trophies of God's grace. That means they got a second chance. Yet oftentimes as Christians, we think God is out there and he's like, man, you messed up and you're done. Once and done. And that's just not how it works because the question is, who told you that? Because as you're gonna see today in the scripture, in God's word, the Bible tells us that he is a God who is loving, gracious, kind, patient, long-suffering, He's able to bear with our humanity, and he is a God who gives second chances. But not just second chances, he is a God who gives new beginnings. Second Peter, out of the message paraphrase, says it this way. Don't overlook the obvious here. Don't overlook it. It's in plain sight. If you'll just see it clearly today, Don't overlook the obvious, friends. With God, one day is as good as a thousand years, a thousand years as a day. God isn't late with his promise as some measure lateness. He is restraining himself on account of you, holding back the end because he doesn't want anyone lost. He's giving everyone, here it is, space and time to change. I mean, isn't that a good word? God is giving you and I space and time to change. He's giving us not just a second chance, but chance after chance after chance, and he's given us a new beginning. And so the end of our life is not here because he's giving us space and time to change. And if you're a Christian, he's giving you space and time to be more like Jesus. Lamentations says it this way in chapter three, yet I still dare to hope when I remember this, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Here it is. Great is his faithfulness. Because why? Because his mercies begin afresh each morning. That means they start over. That means when you don't get it right, they start again. When you don't do what you're supposed to, it starts again. When you, when you slip and fall, he picks you back up. When, when you totally blow it and you mess up, he, he, he gives you a fresh start, a clean slate, a pardon for your sin. Who told you that there are no second chances? We don't see that in scripture, yet oftentimes well-meaning Christians live life in such a way and orient their life in relation with God in such a way that it feels like, man, I don't get a second chance. I've gone too far, I've done too much. I am still struggling with my past even though I'm supposed to be new in Christ. And I'm just here to tell you, the Lord is faithful. He's great in his faithfulness. His mercies are new every day. Who told you that there are no second chances? We see this again, incredible story in the life of Jonah. Jonah was this prophet for God in the Old Testament, and God was asking Jonah to basically go to a place, a city, a people called Nineveh, and basically tell them, hey, the way you're doing life, it's not God's best for you. And if you don't watch it, God's gonna bring judgment on you. Like, 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 who wants to deliver that message, you know? Hey, by the way, y'all are outside of God's best, and if you don't um, shape up, he's gonna ship you out, you know? And, and, so, and, so, and so Jonah wasn't so sure if this is the assignment he wanted to accomplish with his life. He, he, he kind of wasn't um, really into it. 
He really wasn't wanting to deliver that message for a variety of reasons, one of which the city of Nineveh was known to be harsh and warriors, the Assyrian, I mean, they were, they were battle ready. I mean, you come to their city and they're gonna mess you up. It's the place you don't wanna be when, there's, when it's dark out at night, you know what I mean? The, the back alley, they're gonna get you. Nineveh was not a friendly place. And so to go to a place of hostility, of, 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 of war, of terror, and deliver the message, hey, by the way, um, if you don't start following the one true God, Jehovah, um, he's gonna take you out. He was like, no thank you, I'm not doing that. And, and, and so we see this begin to play out in Jonah's life. And the whole point of being called a prophet is that you have to speak when God tells you to speak. And, and so we see this pick up in his life here. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai, get up, and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. Okay, so we, li we live and serve a holy God and so it makes sense that he would bring judgment on a people who are not living up to his standard. And so he's just telling, hey, Jonah, do your job. Tell him the message and look what happens. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction <laughs> um, to get away from the Lord. He got up, thought to himself, I'm not so sure. And, and notice this, he went the opposite way of the Lord. So he went away from God, not towards God. God gave him the message, the assignment, which each of us, by the way, has a unique God assignment which we must discover and part of the way in which we help people do that at our church is we go through this, this opportunity to learn and grow in that called Growth Track. Third Sunday of every month, if you join us in person, you can attend and we'll help you discover your unique God assignment. And we're gonna help you not run from your God assignment, but run to your God. And so here, Jonah's like, no, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm getting and, and going the opposite direction of you, God. And so he went away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa and where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. And he's like, I'm going as far away as possible from Nineveh and from the Lord. Goes on to say, he bought a ticket and went on board hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Now, not all storms, not all things we encounter that are difficult or, or we would consider um, challenging or trials in our life are from the Lord, but there are times and seasons in our life where God will do what is necessary to get our attention when we go the wrong direction. Okay, so, so that's just kind of how it works. And so he caused the storm, that threatened to break the ship apart, and fearing for the lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. So notice the sailors weren't serving the one true God, Jehovah, the one that Jonah was running from. They just like, hey, hey, tell all the gods, all the, anyone got a God? We wanna, you know, let's appease them, let's throw some stuff overboard, let's shout to them, because like we're about to die. We're about to lose our life, and they had no reason why except for, man, there's a storm, and, and it's a mess. But we understand now, because we're reading it, that, that it was God trying to get Jonah's attention. But the funny thing is, whenever we make a bad decision, there, there's some results that come with those bad decisions. And, and let me just set the, the stage for us today, because a lot of us think we are the summation of our bad decisions. And it starts oftentimes as a young child and as we grow older, we, we don't recorrect of who told you that, that you are the sum of your bad decisions. The other day my son made a bad decision and they were playing a game and it was a game that he should have been more careful with and, and basically my, his brother ended up hitting his head and, and swelled up and, and didn't have a concussion, thank God. But I said, hey man, that was a bad decision. He's like, I'm such a bad kid. I always make mistakes and, and always, oh, you know, just went off and off and off. And, I said, hey, listen, you are not the sum of your bad decision, but you made a bad decision. And, and so here's what I want to tell you today. 
you're not the sum of your bad decisions, but some of us, we've made some bad choices. Some of us, we've gone the opposite direction of God. Some of us today watching, we've been running from God, and now somehow you started watching Rock Creek, and I'm just here to tell you, God is after you. God's after you. And he'll do what he has to do to get your attention. But oftentimes, what I've experienced, and maybe you have too, that when you make a bad choice, the first instinct is actually not to, not to go to God, it's, to, it's actually to withdraw. To like withdraw from God. Look at Jonah says, but all this time Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So, so, <laughs> so, so here's the deal, storm coming, ship shaking, and here Jonah is trying to hide downstairs in the hold, the bottom of the ship, with, look, with no intention of addressing the issues, withdrawing from life, withdrawing from God's presence, withdrawing from his assignment, withdrawing from, from people. So oftentimes because of the shame and guilt associated with our bad decisions, what comes natural to our humanness is to withdraw from people, to withdraw from God. And I just wanna help steer you a little bit that that's not, the, that's not the way that God intended for you to do when you make a bad decision. Because who told you that there are no more second chances? I think the next thing we see is that we see this denial and blame game, which is like, it was them, they made me do it. I mean, in Jonah's case, you could probably think like, if the people of Nineveh weren't so bad, this would be a lot easier of an assignment. Right? Like if it was just a little bit easier, maybe I could just tone down the phrase versus God's judgment is coming to you today. It's like, well, guys, I, I mean, you know, God really loves you and he, he, he is love and, 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 you know, just water down the message just a smidge and, and maybe it'd be easier to deliver and fulfill my unique God assignment. But no, but no we see this denial and blame. And, and what we see actually is the sailors going, hey, what is it? What is it? What's going on? Again, Jonah tells us the story. Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused the terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. And they're like, hey, it's that guy. Let's blame him. And so why is this awful storm come down on us? They demanded. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? And Jonah's like, I ain't answering any of those questions. Well, I might answer a few, but I'm gonna blame everybody else for my issues. And, and this doesn't, doesn't seem too far off from our culture today. You make a mistake, people wanna cancel you, people wanna drag you through the mud, and then we blame everyone else. Well, I'm just a victim of my environment. I'm just a victim of my bad parents. I'm just a victim of a bad boss. I'm just a victim of, of uh, inequality in whatever realm you think it, it pertains to you, gender, identity, race. It's like, hey, it's everybody else's fault but me. When in reality, just like Jonah, Jonah ran the opposite direction of God when God had given him assignment. And so here's what I want you to know. If you run the opposite direction of God, you're gonna come to a place where you don't wanna be around people. It'll be everyone else's fault that you are the way that you are. And, and, and I'm just telling you, in Christ, there is no victims, we have victory. So who told you when you make a bad decision, there are no second chances? Who told you that when you blow it completely in your marriage or with your kids or in your work or in your faith, that you go, I'll never go back to that pattern of sin and struggle and here you are finding yourself again back on the same pattern? Who told you that there are no second chances? We are a product of our decisions, but that's not who we are if we're in Christ. And I think the next part of Jonah's story, and maybe you can relate to this, is that we actually see what's called a partial confession. So like, hey, who are you? Where are you from? Uh, what do you do for work? <laughs> and, 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 and Jonah's like, well, here's his answer. I'm a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the land. So finally, we see this, this partial confession, this half-truth. It's like, yeah, I'm a Hebrew. I worship the Lord. And, and the reason why the storm is away, because he controls it. 
And that's what happens when we make decisions. We, we kind of go halfway instead of owning the outcome. I think one of the greatest things we can do as Christians, of people of faith, is to own our bad decisions and not let them be the sum of our life or our identity, but own it. Yeah, I mean, I blew it today. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, man, I got back in that, in that pattern of sin that I said I wouldn't get in, and, and, and it's my own, I'll own it. I'll own the outcome. And I think when you can evaluate honestly where you're at, you can, you can actually move to where God wants you to be. But, but sometimes as we make that confession, it's not the full truth, because the full truth is the reason why the storm came is because God was trying to get Jonah's attention because he was disobedient to what God had called him to do. And so then we move from this. If we get a partial confession instead of a, instead of a full confession, we get what I call this overreaction, this overreaction. And so we, then we go overboard, because look what happens in Jonah 1. He says this, and since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to you to stop the storm? Hey, he says, throw me into the sea. <laughs> throw me into the sea, Jonah said and it will become calm again. I know this, this terrible storm is all my fault. It's all my fault. It's woe is me. I'm such a bad person. I'm, I'm just the, I keep making, I mean, just like my son, Jonah was the same way. Oh, I'm just a bad person. Oh, I'm just the way I always will be. My mama was this way. My daddy was this way. And this is the way I'm going to be. And, and I keep struggling and I, I want to get free, but I keep going back to the same. I just throw me into the sea. It's all my fault. And so he got thrown in that sea. And whatever you believe about the Bible, we believe the Bible is true. It's infallible. It's without error. And, and, and so we see this miraculous intervention from God Almighty through creation in Jonah's life. So they throw him over. But look what the Lord did. Now the Lord arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. And if you're a Christian watching it, you see this future foreshadowing, this glimpse into into the life of Christ. The life of Christ. Christ was, was buried three days and rose again. And so we have a beautiful picture to look back and go, oh my gosh, Jonah doesn't even realize what's about to happen, but we've, we know that God is going to use this to get his attention. So the Lord swallowed up Jonah. I said, listen, if you want to run from me, I'm going I'm to get you anyways. And, and so, so it's a beautiful picture of God's grace at work in Jonah's life. And I'm just here to tell you, if he worked in Jonah's life, he wants to work in your life. If Jonah tried to run from God and God's like, nope, you're not running from me. I'm coming after you. You're mine. You will fulfill all that I've called you to do. And I'm just here to remind you, no matter what you've done, no matter how far you've gone, no matter what sin you're committing right now in this moment, God is coming after you today, using my voice and the words of Jonah to tell you, hey, he will get your attention, he will shake your world, and he will swallow you up so that you'll look at him and go, okay, I'm done running. I, I need a second chance. I need a clean slate. I need a fresh start because who told you? There are no more second chances. They were wrong. It's not what we see. So in the life of Jonah, as he's swallowed up, here's what you do when you've made a bad decision. You don't withdraw. You don't overreact. You don't go crazy. But here's what you do instead. You pray expectantly. When you've made a bad decision and you feel like, I don't deserve a second chance, I'm not sure if God even wants to give it. You pray with expectation that God, who is faithful, great is his faithfulness, um, wants to intervene in your life. Look what happens in Jonah chapter two. And then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish, and he said, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble. I cried out to God, I prayed to God, I, I, I lifted my voice to God in worship and in prayer, and I prayed with expectation that God, you'll deliver me. God, you'll speak to me again. Who told you there are no second chances? Well, you know what Jonah was asking for a second chance? Jonah was asking for another opportunity. Swallowed up with no place to go, and it was him and God wrestling, and it was him crying out to God, give me another shot. I'm in trouble. And here's the good news, church. When you're in trouble, the go-to is G-O-D. It's God. And as you cry out to him, 
I think we learn from Jonah's life in a very unique way that you must also embrace your reality. Embrace your reality like, hey, God, I'm crying out to you. I blew it. I didn't follow your, your word. I didn't follow your path. I got on my own way. I, I, I got in the way of, of your way. And I've been doing my own thing. And so you must embrace where you're really at. Look what happens in Jonah chapter two. You threw me into the ocean depths and I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, O oh Lord, you have driven me from your presence, yet I will look once more toward your holy temple. Now, now isn't it interesting? You drove me. <laughs> You've driven me from your presence. No, no, Jonah did that. Jonah went the opposite direction of God. Hey, I'm just here to tell you, if you've gone the opposite direction of God, God is looking for you. And so we see Jonah in this beautiful moment of brokenness to go, hey, I'm gonna look towards you once again. I'm gonna look towards the holy temple, the place where God's presence dwells again, because I know you're the God of second chances. I know you're the God of new beginnings. I know you're the God of great faithfulness. So in a moment of, of bad decision, Fallen apart at the seams, swallowed up, Jonah goes, I blew it. This is what's really going on. He's crying out to God. He's praying with expectation. He's asking God, hey, here's what's really going on. And then he moves to this beautiful place of what I call faith or, or trust. Trust in what? Trust that God is still working. Trust that God is not forgotten. Trust that God is still working even while we're waiting, even in the middle of our falling apart at the seams moment, even in the middle of our own result of bad decisions, of, of decisions to willfully sin against God and his best for us. We must trust that God is still working. You know, we must trust that, that he's the God who gives second chances. Look at Jonah chapter two, verse nine says, but I will offer sacrifice to you with songs of praise and I will fulfill all my vows, for my salvation comes from the Lord alone. So we see this beautiful moment swallowed up by God. At first Jonah was withdrawing, he was isolating himself, he, he definitely overreacted. <laughs> he, he definitely lost it, his cool. And as God swallowed him up and it was just him and God, he, he had that moment of prayer, that crying out to God in expectation. He, he had a moment where he goes, this is what's really going on. And, and it moved into a place of trusting that maybe perhaps perchance God would do again something in his life. And so what happened in my opinion, what we see in the Bible in this text, is that Jonah repented. I will fulfill all my vows. What is he saying? I, I'm gonna follow your word. I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna fulfill the unique God assignment you gave me. I'm gonna go after you with all that I am. I'm not gonna go the opposite direction of you, God. I'm gonna go towards you, God, even in the midst of my mistakes, even in the midst of my bad decisions, even when I don't get it right. You're the God who gives second chances, who gives new beginnings, who told you that there are no second chances. I'm here to tell you they were wrong. God is a God of second chances, of new beginnings, a fresh start. His mercies are new every morning. You wake up, they're new. You go to sleep and you've messed up that day, you wake up, they're new. His mercies are new for you today. So, so what have you done? What pattern of sin have you, are, are you caught up in? Jonah knows what it's like to go the opposite direction, God, and you might as well but he also knows what it means to turn his life back to God, towards God, to, to reorient his, his path towards God's ways. Because ultimately, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna see it in the life of Jonah, that you gotta seize your second chance. You gotta grab it and go, okay, here it is. Here it is, so look what happens in Jonah chapter two, and it, and it goes on to chapter three. And then the Lord ordered the fish to spit Jonah out onto the beach, and then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. The Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. He didn't deserve it, he didn't earn it, it he wasn't worthy of it, yet God in his mercy, 
as Jonah repented and turned back to God and said, hey, I've made some mistakes. This is the reality of who I am. I went the opposite way, even though you told me your assignment for my life, and I didn't follow you. I ran from your presence and tried to blame you for it, but here I am looking to you again to be my savior, looking at you to, again to be my God, and God says, I got you now. Here's your second chance, and he spoke again. And so here's your word today. There's a second chance for you available, but you gotta seize it. You gotta make the most of it. You gotta take it and let God transform you into the person he's called you to be. Because ultimately, God is not interested in paying you back, but in bringing you back. That's what God is interested in. When it came to the life of Jonah, he wasn't interested in paying him back. And, and, and causing him harm. No, no, he was trying to bring him back to himself. He was trying to bring Jonah back to his calling. He was trying to bring Jonah back to his purpose. He was trying to bring Jonah back into his presence. Yet oftentimes when we blow it, when we make mistakes, when we go too far, we believe the lie because someone along our way told us that God doesn't give second chances to people like you, to people like me. But I'm just here to tell you, that's not what God says. He says, I'm not interested in paying you back. I'm interested in bringing you back. So come home, come back to God, repent of your sin, go towards God, not away from God. This is the gospel at work who told you that there are no more second chances. Culture says that. A friend might say that. Media, social, commentary definitely is saying that. You blow it, you're done. You blow it, you're, you're out. You blow it, you lose your career. You blow it, now listen, there are consequences, but, but in God's kingdom, he's not trying to pay you back. He's, he's trying to bring you back. He's trying to bring you back. So I guess the question I'm asking you today is, do you need a second chance? Because who told you that there are none? They were wrong, and God is right. He loves you today. He's got a fresh beginning for you today, a second chance for you today. When you fall short, his mercies are new every morning. Don't miss the obvious today, the obvious part of our faith, that God loves you, he redeems you, he forgives you, and he makes you new. Even when you don't get it right, especially when you don't get it right. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you for every single person watching. I pray today in the same way that you worked in Jonah's life, you would work in our life. God, for those of us who've made some bad choices, some bad decisions, we find ourselves in the storm of life. I pray today you would, you would, you would pick us up, you would swallow us up in your, in your presence and we would turn back to you, we would be honest with where we're at, we wouldn't blame anybody else or deny what's really going on, and we would pray to you, and God, in this prayer moment, you would meet us right where we are. And so I pray for every single person who felt like they've gone too far, they've done too much to deserve a second chance, and that's the great thing about God's grace is that we don't deserve it, but you give it anyway, so I pray your grace to invade every heart of every person watching today. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us clean and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And I pray today a sense of that in our hearts for every person, in every marriage, for every mom, for every dad, for every parent. We thank you for that fresh grace, for the second chance that we all need sooner or later. In your mighty name we pray, Jesus. And everyone watching said amen. I'm so glad you joined us again as you take your next steps today. Look for the link. We love to help you walk out your faith. Groups are launching, signing up today so you can get on registered, sign up for a group, join us uh, online as always. And we'd love to see you in person for one of our weekend services, three times to choose from. All the details are on the links. As we end today's time together, I would love for you to consider prayerfully partnering with us financially. Your giving is making a difference. As always, we tell people, ask God what to do and then do whatever he says. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for helping accelerate the vision that God is writing in this house called Rock Creek. As always, you're doing better than you think. God bless.